Welcome to Dr. Ernest Simo's series on satellite communications. This tape presents the operation of VSAT networks. Let's begin with a general description of a VSAT network. There are two major functional subsystems internal to the VSAT station. The data transmission system, which provides transmission paths between the hub and the remote VSATs, and the network management, monitor, and control system, whose users are the network operators. In a VSAT system, there are three types of hardware, namely the remote terminals, the satellite, and the hub station. To ensure a smooth operation of the network, a sound operation and maintenance strategy must be formulated during the system design process. This O&M plan supports remote diagnostics, corrective and preventive maintenance actions, and long-term operational issues such as network growth and reconfiguration. The remote VSAT station provides connectivity from the remote user equipment to the central hub via satellite. Physically, it consists of a 1.2 meter, 1.8 meter, or 2.4 meter antenna, an outdoor unit, and an indoor unit. The outdoor unit is connected to the indoor unit by an interfacility link. The indoor unit consists of a modem, a codec, a synthesizer, and a baseband processor. The baseband processor performs multiplexing and demultiplexing functions, protocol conversion functions, and provides the interface to the user equipment through data ports. There is a management, monitor, and control unit within the baseband processor. This unit collects status information from the VSAT and continuously reports to the hub either automatically or as a response to a poll. The satellite is a geosynchronous repeater which receives, amplifies, and retransmits RF carriers between the remote VSATs and the hub. Various transponder lease options are currently available. The preemptible lease option does not guarantee transponder availability to the user. The transponder owner reserves the right to use the transponder for other purposes at short notice. The non-protected lease option guarantees transponder availability until a failure occurs. The protected lease option guarantees transponder availability even in the event of a failure since backup support is provided. For optimum utilization of the space segment resources, the multiple access scheme used on inbound channels is different from that used on outbound channels. This is due to the different and often asymmetrical characteristics between the inbound and outbound traffic requirements in VSAT networks. For inbound link transmission, there are currently three preferred multiple access techniques used in VSAT networks. Code division multiple access, CDMA, using spread spectrum technology is the method developed for C-band applications. For KU band systems, time division multiple access, TDMA, random access, and their derivatives are the preferred strategies. Let's review these multiple access techniques. Code division multiple access allows several users to share one satellite channel simultaneously. However, systems using spread spectrum technology are very bandwidth inefficient. Time division multiple access divides the transmission and access time to a satellite channel into slots. A given remote terminal is then assigned a specific time slot in which it can transmit in order to access and utilize the satellite channel. The next time slot is assigned to a different remote terminal for its transaction. Each remote terminal is hence given a chance to access and utilize the satellite channel resources in terms of power and bandwidth for a short period of time. The elapsed time during which all the stations sharing the channel have had the chance to access the satellite channel is defined as a frame. Frames are then repeated continuously to allow remote stations to communicate with a hub. The advantage of TDMA techniques in VSAT networks is that in heavy traffic conditions, the satellite channel is accessed almost continuously. This results in a high channel utilization and a high system throughput. However, in thin traffic conditions, delays may be longer. Even if only one remote terminal needs to communicate, it must wait for its assigned time slot to occur. 
This translates into longer response time in the network. Random access methods allow a remote VSAT station to transmit whenever it's ready to send information without having to wait for a time slot or a command from the network control center. If the transmitted packet of information is successfully received by the satellite, it is then repeated or retransmitted to the network hub. However, two or more remote VSAT stations may choose statistically to transmit data at the same time. Since several remotes are using the same frequency to share the satellite channel, these simultaneously transmitted packets of information may collide and get destroyed. In this case, the remote terminals concerned must reschedule their transmissions, usually by waiting for a random length of time and trying again until successful transmission is achieved. This method is known as the Aloha Technique. System response time and throughput using Aloha techniques can be greatly improved by dividing time into slots and allowing a VSAT station to transmit only at the start of a given slot. This strategy is known as slotted Aloha. One advantage of random access techniques for VSAT networks implementation is the relatively short response time in low traffic environments, since a terminal is allowed to transmit any time that it is ready to send some information. A second advantage of random access methods is the relatively lower cost of the VSAT station as the result of less stringent slot timing requirement. Accurate timing and synchronization are required in TDMA networks in order to prevent transmitted bursts from colliding. However, in heavy traffic environments, random access techniques may generate too many collisions. This tends to increase response time and reduced channel utilization and system throughput. Both TDMA and random access techniques can be implemented in a VSAT station. During light traffic conditions, such a hybrid system would operate in the random access mode in order to minimize delays. Under heavier traffic conditions, TDMA techniques would be used in order to improve channel utilization and system throughput. The hub station consists of two groupings of equipment. The transmission system group supports the data transmission function and consists of the antenna subsystem, the RF subsystem, and the baseband subsystem. The monitor and control group provides the network management, monitoring and control functions, and consists of a main processor and several operator workstations. Typically, the monitor and control processor is implemented on a mainframe computer which is configured with a processing unit, disk storage, line printers, and interfaces for communication with the remote VSATs. This processor is the heart of the network management, monitoring, and control system, and maintains data about the current status and configuration of every VSAT and hub equipment. The network operators control and administer the network via the operator workstations. Status data is sent by the central processor to the workstations upon request, while alarms are sent as soon as they are diagnosed. The menu-driven and user-friendly forms allow operators to display the information received from the central processor. Control information originates with a command entered by an operator at a workstation. From there, the control command is sent to the central processor where it is suitably formatted and transmitted to the appropriate network component. The data flow in a VSAT network is interesting. Current VSAT networks are configured in a star arrangement with all the remote VSATs connected to the hub via satellite. Each VSAT to hub connection typically provides a full duplex circuit operating at data rates of up to 256 kilobits per second. At the source end of the transmission path, either at the VSAT or hub, the user information data and the monitor and control data are time division multiplexed to form one aggregate bit stream. This bit stream will be encoded, perhaps using a rate one-half forward error correction code. The encoded bit stream will then modulate an IF carrier through a process known as phase shift keying, PSK, 
whereby the phase of the carrier is suitably changed to represent binary values. For example, a carrier phase of zero degrees would represent a binary zero, while a phase of 180 degrees represents a binary one. So by detecting the correct phase changes at the receiver, the original data stream can be recovered. The modulated IF carrier is up-converted, amplified, and transmitted via satellite to a destination location. At the destination, the RF carrier power is collected by the receiving antenna, amplified, down-converted, and demodulated. The encoded bit stream is decoded and demultiplexed to separate the data channels. The user information data is sent to the user device and the monitor and control data is sent to the monitor and control equipment. 